welcome to this last video tutorial of joining tables together in SQL part two. Okay, so last time we created some tables using the flight 2008.csv dataset and the flight 2007a dataset as well. Now what we're going to do is keep using these datasets because what we want to do is see if we can't import or not import, but join these tables together in more interesting ways. Okay, so we did a very simple join, and what I find is that students often are quite confused about it. So seeing a couple examples really helps them think through it. Okay, so let's look at the 2007 data. Suppose we actually want to see which of these flights are worse, and what we did before was the destination and the day of the week, I believe. So well, here what we want to do is how about we look at the destination and the month. Okay, uh, we're still gonna leave from Richmond, but what you need to do when you think about joining tables together is when do you aggregate? Do you join and then aggregate or do you aggregate and then join them together? Uh, I'm a big fan of actually doing the second, right? Roll them both up, aggregate them both, then put them together because the join takes much less time and aggregating in SQL is quite quick. Okay, so uh, let's try this here real quick. We're going to create a new table. Uh, so I'm going to call this, uh, let's say here, uh, month, because we're going to fly out of Richmond. And it's going to be 2007, okay, as. And then here we're going to select from our table. We're only going to work with one table on this particular query. So we're going to reuse the flight or select what we want month and we wanted the uh, destination and we wanted the mean of the delays, right? And we have delay information here. We want a delay on departure and arrival time. So let's just do those two. Delay on departure and arrival time. So mean uh, de uh, delay and and we have to give this a name, so we'll call this um, mean uh, depth for departure. And we're going to keep going with this. We're going to do arrival delay. And we'll call this mean R. And we're going to take this from our flight. Uh, and that's a directory, flight. 2007 table. Now, when I created this table, it's going to drop it into work. So if we want to keep it around, we probably need to add the directory or the library where it needs to go. Uh, and then since we've been aggregating, we need to group by. So I'm going to group by whatever's in front here. So the month and the destination. So uh, we'll see if we can get this to work here. Uh, let's make sure that everything looks right before we run this thing because it does take some time. Uh, let's see here. We have, make sure dest is right. Our origin and dest. Oh, wait, we didn't specify our origin. So let's also specify our origin where our origin is equal to Richmond, R-I-C. That's the airport code for Richmond International Airport. All right, so let's give this a run here real quick. Make sure this is going to work for us. So away we go. We run this, and uh, apparently it didn't like us. So we need to go to the log and see what happens. And notice that it says mean R, and you can see that it was expecting one of these words. And this is why I'm doing this video is because I was planning on making mistakes. So you can see how to use the log here. I see the word as, and I see that in my code I didn't put as. So I come over here and do as. Now we'll run it and make sure it works right. And let's see what happens. We're waiting. We're waiting. Poof. We have month 2007. And look what I have. I have the month. I have the destination. And I have the mean departure delay and the mean arrival delay. Uh, and I have this for every single month and every single departure and delay. Okay, um, so now we can actually jump in here and do this again. So we can copy and paste this. So your favorite uh, idea here is to copy and paste. Uh, but this time we're going to create this for 2008. So we're going to put an 8 here, put an 8 here. I'm going to run both of these again. And when I run this, 
It aggregates both of them up, and it should create two tables for me. Month 2007, and now a month 2008. We'll see if it pops up here. If it does, that will be great, because that means we've actually calculated or found the correct value. So here we go. We have month 2008, so we can look at it. And yes, it has our information. So what we might want to do now is join these together. So let's create a table. Uh, what do we want to call this? We probably want, it's in our flight library. So we'll just call it month delay as. This is our query here. So it's going to have a month. It's going to have destination. And then we're going to have, for both of these, we're going to have these two values. So we're going to have mean depth and we're going to have mean R. Uh, and then we're going to take this from... Let's see here. We're going to have it from flight dot flight two thousand seven and the, or month right. This is where our data is coming from. Month two thousand seven and flight dot month two thousand eight. Now, notice we're going to have to use this idea of aliasing again because month and destination, all of these three or four variables exist in both data sets. So it has no idea which one we want to pull from. So what we need to do is actually give these things names. I could put flight.month.2007.month in here, <sighs> or I can just use an alias. And that's what most people do. And the re that's why I'm putting this in here is because if you work in a job set of situation, this is what you're gonna see. So we're gonna give each of these a nickname. That's what an alias is. We're gonna give it a nickname. Uh, I'm just going to call this A, and I'll call this one B. Why? Because it actually works. So this one I'm going to pull from A. The destination I can pull from B. It doesn't really matter on these two. But here I want the departure time from A, and then I want the departure time from B. Well, actually, I want the departure time from arrival time at A as well. And I probably should put aliases on this so that I can keep working with it. So here I'm going to give this a uh, another thing, another alias. So how about MD2007, because that's the 2007 data set. And I'll call this one as MD2008. And then I also need to do B, mean depth as MD2007. Uh, no, this is 8, right? Because we're interested in 2008. This should be 2007. Got to keep your things right here. Uh, otherwise, you will go insane. Trust me, I know, because as you probably figured out, if I've made this, I think this is video number 100 in the list of videos for this class. Uh, I must be insane in order to make this work. All right, so I have these two. Now I need to join them together. So you don't put join, you put uh, here where, here uh, a dot month equals b dot month. So where they match on month and where they match on destination. Because these two clearly define what we're interested in. Uh, we don't need to group by because we didn't do any aggregation. So let's give this all a go. It's all inside one SQL statement. And we'll see if this spits out what we're interested in. We wait and we wait and we wait. Take a drink of coffee or tea or whatever. Go to the bathroom. Wait a bit because this is not fast because we're dealing with some large data sets. So you might as well just get used to waiting. All right, are we done yet? Um, a month delay. Oh, let's see. Are we have this? View, the log. And somewhere along the way, it gave up. Oh, wait, what did we do? Oh, notice I made another mistake. That's why I'm trying to teach you to use the log. So what should be here? And, not as. So let's run all of this again. Notice that when you make a mistake, if you're dealing with large data, you waste a lot of time, which if you're like me, you don't mind wasting a little bit of time. So you can go to the restroom or drink some tea or coffee or whatever. Ah, that was my sip of tea that I just drank while I'm waiting and bingo, we finally have it done. 
And here is what we have. We have MD 2008, MD 2007. And those were the only things we selected out of here, I think. Um, let's see, me, uh, MD 2007, MD 2008. Yes, because I actually made a mistake here because this should be ARR. Notice I keep making mistakes. Why do I keep making mistakes? Because I want you to see that you can screw this up really easy. Uh, notice the log says, oh wait, there's already this variable. So it doesn't even create it for me. So it just gets confused on what to do and it says, well, I'm not doing anything. Uh, notice I named them MD as well. These should be MA. Okay, so you have to be really careful when you're just cranking through this stuff, sometimes you don't really think and you just keep punching in numbers and letters and hoping that whatever comes out the other end will be what you thought it should be. And that's the biggest problem is that the computer doesn't know what you think. So don't expect it to think anything other than what you tell it to think. So just be careful of that. Again, I'm gonna take another sip of tea. Wait, oh, is it done? Yes, and we actually have what we're interested in here. We have MD 2007, MA 2007, MD 2008, MA 2008. So we have all of the things here, and hopefully what you're getting from this video is the fact that you can screw things up really easy if you don't pay attention. And also, as you're going along, you should be making mistakes. And I purposely made these stupid little mistakes because those are the kind of mistakes most people make. And it's frustrating. And that's why they provide the log for you to be able to troubleshoot your errors. And sometimes the log isn't too bad because it actually tells you what kinds of errors you've made. All right, so this video has run a little bit long, but we can move on to the next video now.